Hi guys, welcome to today's video. Today we are going to work on roses. We're kind of going to make this a weekend of roses. So today's video is about beginner's roses and this is a really important exercise leading up to what we're going to do. So you can see this one here on the left. This is a peony. I get asked about this all the time. And we're going to look at this a lot more in tomorrow's video. So we will be painting this uh, on the channel and you can see here through this uh, booklet, this is in my Etsy shop and I do have a peony like this in, uh, in amongst these pages. Um, so here it is. And so I'll show you tomorrow how I kind of painted this one. We'll go over a, you know, a full a more in-depth video on the channel soon, uh, but you'll be able to get a head start and you'll be able to see from what, what we do in tomorrow's video how this was done. Um, and then this one here, the roses there, we're going to work on tomorrow. So uh, this is what we'll be working on in the video tomorrow. And you can see here that I've enlarged the, uh, the, the sketch there. And so um, they're done in a similar way, but with different materials. So again, I'll talk about this tomorrow, but I think that this, um, this exercise in today's video is a really good way to begin um, to do more advanced roses. So you can see here the emblems are taken off this sheet, but the rose was so the rose was enlarged, and then you can see here like I just um, scribbled with the side of the pencil, so kind of laying the pencil on the side and then scribbling on the back and then I transferred this onto um, the image there. So here is a couple of examples uh, of roses from my sketchbook. So you can see here, these are good ones to practice after we do today's video. You can sort of bring the video back here and uh, you know pause the video here and try and practice some of these different shapes and uh, colors and different types of roses. Okay, so we're working in this Indigo Art Papers sketchbook today. So a few of you have asked me about this book and we'll go a little bit more into that. And I'm also trying out this new um, brush. So, well, it's not a new brush. I got this last Christmas. It's a Raphael one. I got it from Jerry's. You can see it's a long handle one, so it's for oil painting, but I'm thinking to, I was trying it out for videos because I just, I don't like having my hands in the videos. I really, um, you know, they've they've been working hands and they and they're not in the best condition. And I just I just would prefer not to show them if I don't have to. So I'm trying to um, uh, use this this brush, but I actually really really love it. So it's got a cat's tongue, so it's pointy, and then you can kind of use the sides and do all different shapes of it. So I've been really loving this and using it actually quite a lot. So the other thing that I've been working on are cam the camera angles and things. I spent like two hours this week just trying fiddling around with different angles and different ways to um, put the kind of tripod, which I really love actually. Um, I'll have to show that in a video. So it's a really nice sturdy one. Um, yeah, anyway. So we're going to start the roses here. So you can see that I'm doing this kind of C shape, kind of a crescent shape, and just kind of moving those and molding them around each other. So we're kind of doing them asymmetrically so they don't exactly line up. And then as they go out, we get a little bit bigger 
and we want the shapes to be loose we don't necessarily want a perfect uh, kind of C shape or crescent shape we want them to some to be a little thinner some to be a little larger and as we move out um, you know the size increases and the sort of the variation around the petal um, you know the floral formation uh, will change a little bit and so every time you do one of these it should be slightly different um, you can see here as well I'm using the Daniel Smith permanent rose so you can use something like a quinacridone rose but you can see that I started out with the full strength and now I'm watering that down you know so now there's much more water than pigment in the mix and that's what makes the really soft pink as we go towards the edges so I've gone back in to the center here and this is not exactly what I wanted to happen this is why um, uh, this paper is not necessarily my favorite for glazing but as far as it goes I, I am really enjoying this sketchbook and um, yeah it's just uh, as far as like anyway it's sort of more for a you know first glaze so you just want to kind of paint and then uh, make that you know drop in as much pigment as you want to create that you, you can't really go over it because it just kind of lifts off and um, creates a few problems <laughs> going back in here and deepening up the middle the center of the rose here as well so this is where you kind of want to look at which colors do I want in my rose which colors do I want to use for the shadow areas uh, which colors do I want to use for the highlight areas and this is a really uh, fun and nice way to create these loose florals to to see how the um, paint is flowing and how you know the colors are working with the, with what you want to create so I've I've done this second rose here and uh, I've let that 
base kind of layer dry and now I'm going in and adding a little more detail over the top of that. Okay, so you can see that I am using the dip pen and the Winsor & Newton Gold ink here over the top of this rose. And it's got a little bit of a different feeling to it than the others. For starters, I did the center more like the um, kind of five petal shape rather than the crescent moon shapes. And um, so you can see I switched to the paintbrush here. But um, the first rose we did, you know, kind of had some form and some looseness. The second one was a little bit more, um, a little bit more structured, I'd say. And then this one here, I wanted this to have a very light feeling, but the gold over the top of this very loose, more abstract floral. And so the line work actually fills in some of that, the gold line work. And um, this is actually a case of, um, you know, we talk a lot about on the channel. Um, when to know when to stop and how to not overdo things and I think this is a case of, of um, this was really nice at a point where I finished the gold and then I went back in at trying to add some darker um, shades in the middle and because of the way the paper reacts and just because of I don't know the whole thing it yeah that was definitely overworked um, so that's just again something to practice and it's really uh, it's a lot easier to do on these sort of more quick um, roses rather than one that you've sketched out and one that you um, you know have worked on for quite a while so this is where you want to you know work on your colors work on um, the shapes and the forms and the shadow colors so I'm not sure if I mentioned as well but the the colors that I've been using uh, in these roses 
okay so yeah you can see here this is where I start adding the so I think this is Sedona so the colors that I'm using are um, the azalea and neon pink um, the chin Brasso from Wallace and Seymour uh, which is like the Holbein Jean Brilliant number no. two and then the Sedona so I'm mixing that in with it or a little bit of hematite violet or um, the French ochre something like that to just give it a little bit of um, a very natural sort of a shadow and then you can see on the top here I have sprinkled everything with this sun gold so this is from paint and paper studio and then we come back to this rose and I think that I actually mix the uh, neon pink with um, some kaput mortuums to create so some type of uh, a violet earth so um, to create this this kind of center and what I'm trying to do here is glaze um, sort of turn the petals a little bit and glaze on top of the ones we've already done to create sort of this multi-layered and um, flower but again this paper is not the best for glazing so this is the type of thing you know try out the papers that you want to paint on and try it on different papers as well because you'll find that different papers are better for certain techniques <music> Okay, so I did spy in there some shell pink uh, mixed with the Kaput Modulum and the Kaput Modulum mixed with the Daniel Smith Interference Copper as well uh, to create some of those smokier um, shadow colours and some of the shimmer as well. So that is about everything for today guys and I did speed this video up as well otherwise we would have been here for a long time and tomorrow's video is a really long one as well because we've got a lot to cover in the um, in the more advanced rows. So yeah take your time really enjoy it and just enjoy mixing different colors working with the colors lightening them with water and um, just trying some different varieties of roses sizes shapes and enjoying that and also i'm hoping that i can get them on today but possibly now it might be tomorrow so i've been working really hard on this collection of orbison rug paintings so yeah they're inspired by orbison rugs but hopefully just something beautiful to adorn your wall and these should be in my shop tomorrow if not today so we'll see how it goes um, and I did some gold gilding on there as well I really love how it turned out uh, and then tomorrow we'll be working on this beauty and you can get this um, in my shop so you can have this ready for the video as well if you want and so what I did is I just 
put my watercolour paper up against the um, computer screen here and I actually enlarged it so um, yeah it's it was this you know just the regular size and then I enlarged it to the point where it was that's how it would fit on the screen um, and then I just uh, went down to do the second rows if that makes sense like move the screen and the paper down so you can see like that's regular size and then I enlarged it here um, yeah and so I did the rows before so the rows was complete before we added the gold part as well so that's everything for today guys I hope you enjoy it and have a lovely weekend and I will see you soon bye